everybody, Stacy here, and I am going to be doing a video today on fluid art or acrylic pour. The one I'm going to do today is not necessarily an acrylic pour, but it is fluid art. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there on this, and this is the first time that I have done it. And I did my research, I watched a lot of videos, I also read some articles and things like that online. Most of them do not give you a ton of information about the fluid art and the ones that I did get some information from and I saw some videos, I do feel like I trust these people's formulas. And what I'm gonna do is kind of take all the pieces of all of that and put them together and make my own formula. And I am going to show you that. A lot of the fluid art videos or the acrylic pouring videos on YouTube are just a background of music and they don't really tell you anything about it. It's just for you to watch and be pretty and stress-free. Uh, but this is kind of a do-it-yourself tutorial. And I am wearing an outfit that I do not care to get completely messed up with paint even down to the shoes I have. So um, I am going to be going through the amounts of paint versus glue versus water, etc. to mix together in order to get this flow art going and so or fluid art and so uh, Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the items that you will need for this tutorial fluid art is, of course, your canvases. Like I said, I have some small ones this time. And a scale in order to weigh your mixture. Something to stir up your mixture with. In our mixing medium, we have Floetrol glue wall, and water. I've already marked the ounces on this bottle so that we can do the mixing medium and then all I have to do is shake the bottle to mix that up. You'll need, of course, your colors. Any liquid acrylic paint from the craft store will work. And you'll need something small to mix each color in. I have something very small because it's gonna be a small canvas, but uh, I would recommend doing something that's disposable, but I did not want to go out to the store today to just to buy something disposable because we are in the midst of the COVID-19. First, we're gonna mix our mixing medium, which is what you will put with your colors in order to make them more fluid. On the bottle that I already have marked with the ounces, this is not an exact science, so it's okay if you're off a little bit. We're gonna do 10 ounces of the Elmer's Glue All. We're going to do now three to four ounces, let's say three and a half, of the Floetrol. And now we're going to do up to the 16 ounce mark with water. Feel it getting mixed up in there real good. I 
here is 16 ounces of our mixing medium. I have the scale set on grams because that is the smallest um, unit. And so you'll have more accuracy with grams than you will ounces because for the, each color, we may not even have a lot of maybe maybe two ounces total. So it's not gonna be very, very accurate. Okay, the first color I'm gonna mix will be yellow and then we'll go right into all the other colors. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of white so that I can have white on the outside of my painting. All right, I'm only gonna do six grams. It popped up to seven, but that's okay. And of the mixing medium that we just made, I'm going to put in eight grams. Again, this is not an exact science, so if it pops up to nine, that's okay. I'm just checking the consistency. You should have it pretty liquid so that it'll flow over your canvas easily. And I think that this is good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mix all the other colors. I'll speed that up so you don't have to watch it. For this type of fluid art, you will need a straw. Since we're pouring directly onto the canvas, this is called a Dutch pour. I start with the blue, and I'm basically doing two lines. I don't want to cover a lot of the canvas because a lot of the negative space needs to be white. I layer the colors on top of each other, and then I fill in in between the spaces with the white. This is why I mixed more white than I did the colors. Now we take our straw and we lightly blow around the edges of where the lines were into the white. If you would like more of a white outcome in the midst of the color marble, then you would coat the entire canvas with white before you pour your lines of color. And then do the straw. You can see how liquid it is and how easily it flows. Makes a very nice pattern. Now I'm going in after it's dried a little bit and I'm popping any small bubbles that I might see.
I'm going to use this ball chain. These are, I think, two millimeter balls on this chain. And you can get this brand at Bead Landing at Michael's. I'm going to cut these to be long enough, <clears throat> excuse me, long enough to go over, oh, go over my canvas in a kind of design like that, but I can wash and reuse this chain for larger canvases so I'm going to cut mine to be larger longer rather you don't need them that long you only need them long enough to cover your canvas but I have larger projects in mind so I'm going to cut mine here. I'm going to have about eight strings. I have eight strands of the chain here that are longer than what we really need for an eight by eight canvas like I'm gonna to use today, but that's all right, because I can wash them and reuse them. We're gonna put push pins on the back of the canvas to lift it up off the table again. You could also do this by putting it on a cooling rack or something of that sort. I want the base or the main part of this painting to be black. So in order for the white canvas to not show through at any part of the painting, I'm painting the entire thing black. I also do the edges so that the entire thing is covered with the color black rather than having any white spots that might possibly show through. Now I'm going to pour the black with the mixing medium onto the canvas so that we have a thick layer of black paint. You tilt the canvas in order to move the paint along. The colored paints I'm going to put on top of the chains Then I'm going to grab a chain and put it onto the canvas. Trying not to drip onto the canvas before I lay the chain down. In retrospect, I should have made more of a loop at the top of each chain. Now I'm going to grab them at the same spot in the corner of the canvas and slowly pull. I'm just adding a few more because I didn't feel like it did quite enough.
Now I'm going to tilt the canvas so that it moves around a little bit. Okay guys, so we're all done with both of the fluid art designs that I wanted to do today. And I'm gonna flip the camera around here. Let's see here. So here we have the one that I didn't like as much. I don't know if it's because the balls on the chain are a little small. But here we have the one that's marble, and I really like this one. Um, I didn't fold the bag, the trash bag up underneath it soon enough for the wind to blow it over on itself, so we have a little bit of splotching going on and a little bit of weird stuff going on over here on the corner because the trash bag blew up on that corner and blew over on this corner. And so it probably looks different than what it originally looked like at the end of the, the doing of that. But um, I'm gonna leave them out here to dry and they should look exactly like this whenever they're dry except a little less shiny. <laughs>